How beautiful is to see the nature. Flowers all over the world add the beauty of nature according to my view. Do you know how the most flowers are formed? Yes, it is formed by a process called pollination. Pollination is a transfer of pollen from one flower to another. Or we can say from another to the stigma of a flower. This is the first step in the reproduction. Then only the fertilization process will be carried out. Today we are going to see that are the different types of pollination. All sexual re sexually reproducing plants produce pollen grain. The transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of the same flower is called as self-pollination. Whereas if the pollen grain is transferred from anther to the stigma of another flower of the same species, a type of pollination is called as cross-pollination. Clear? Now let us see one by one in detail. First of all, types of self-pollination. First type is autogamy. Autogamy is a type of self-pollination in which the transfer of pollen grain happens from the anther to the stigma of the same flower. That is in the case of bisexual flowers. Here in bisexual flowers as we already have told that is anther and stigma that is the male reproductive part and female reproductive part will be in the same Flower. So that is type of called as autogamy. The next type is gypnogamy. It's a transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of anther flower of the same plant. Please note it is anther flower of the same plant. That type of self pollination is called as gypnogamy. That can also happen. And in some plants, self pollination also happens in bud condition. Okay. So that is about the self-pollination, that is different types of self-pollination. Now there are two types of flowers undergoing self-pollination. One is chasmogamous flower and the other one is pleistogamous flower. Now let us see what is that. Chasmogamous flowers are open flowers that can undergo both self-pollination and cross-pollination. That is it is open type, normal type of flowers which we see. They need an agent for pollination. Obviously, they need an agent for pollination. It can be through wind, by insect, birds, whatever. Examples are Alamanta, Ixora, Hibiscus or all the normal flowers which you see in your garden which is open. Next type is Cleistogamous flowers. These flowers are always closed. They remain closed throughout their lifetime. And these flowers can only undergo self-pollination. And then does not need any agent for pollination because it's strictly self-pollination. Examples are Comelina, Viola and Oxalis. Now let me ask you a question. Why we say gapnogamy is functionally similar to cross-pollination but genetically similar to self-pollination? Please think and answer. I hope you got the answer. It is called it's functionally similar to cross-pollination because it is happening in two different flowers even though it is in the same plant it is happening in two different flowers and they are genetically similar to self-pollination because it happens in the same plant so there is no any variation seen so that is why they are called as genetically similar to self-pollination and functionally similar to cross-pollination okay now next what is cross-pollination Cross-pollination is otherwise called as xenogamy or elogamy. It is a transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of another flower of the same species. It's not of the same plant and the flower of the same species. So cross-pollination happens in two different plants. So obviously in cross-pollination they need agents of pollination. They can be biotic and abiotic that is living and non-living. We will come into that later. Okay. Next let us see which are the agents of pollination, how the pollination is carried out by different means. First one is wind pollination, pollination by wind is also called as anemophily, it is anemophily. Now we can see what are the characteristic features of flowers which undergo wind pollination. The first of all the flowers are very small and inconspicuous. Inconspicuous means the flower will not be much visible and also they will not be that much attractive. Then the corolla and calyx are reduced or absent. In this type of flowers which undergo wind pollination, corolla or we can say the perian that is both calyx and corolla. 
they will be very smaller in size or even absent then colorless nectarless or odorless flowers are produced by this type of plants there won't be any odor smell color nothing the next is the main flowers will be produced in large number that is for the successful rate of this type of pollination then the stamens and stigmas will be feathery and well exposed since it is undergoing wind pollination they will be very feathery in order to dust in the air and also well exposed it will be seen to outside to the flower not seen inside the petal it will be exposed out the next is like pollens are very light in weight and they will be small in structure dusty and non sticky and even winged pollens are there which is undergoing wind pollination examples for the plants undergoing wind pollination includes all grass family plants like rice wheat maize oats bajra barley whatever then dandelion is an example and the example for winged pollen is pinus okay the next type of pollination is by insect it is also called as entomophily now let us see the characteristic features of flowers undergoing entomophily flowers will be very large if it is small it will be conspicuous it will be very clear and attractive flowers are very showy and brightly colored stamens and stigmas are inserted it is not exposed just like the other form that is in wind pollination here it will be inserted into the petal now flowers will secrete odor and nectars in order to attract the insect and for feeding another feature is here the flowers show certain pollen guide or the nectar guide for attracting the insect into the uh, nectar or to the pollen here it can be like uh, certain patterns of flowers or a uh, certain marking in the flowers helps for the insect to go and attract the nectar and feed them example is viola or pansy there you can see certain marking lines are there in the flowers these are the nectar guide which attract the insect and guide them to the nectar another feature is the plant or the flower produce edible pollen which are consumable examples are in rose clematis etc then another feature of this flower is the presence of pollen kit this is also a special feature this is helping for the insect pollination okay that is all about the insect pollination next we go to water pollinating plants it is otherwise called as hydrophily now what are the characteristic features of flowers flowers are very small in conspicuous and here they are nectarless and odorless there is no need of that the nectar should be produced or it should be very um or uh, sm its pleasant smell should be there or not there is no need of that because it is carried out by the pollination is being carried out through the water the next feature is pollens are light in weight unwettable which is covered with a mucilage covering here all other floral parts are also unwettable the stigma is very long and sticky and that too it is unwettable since it is seen in the water for water pollination the next is hydrophily is of two type hypohydrophily and epihydrophily now let us see what is it the first one is hypohydrophily here it's a type of water pollination in which happens under water pollination is carried out from that's inside the water here the pollen grains will be of filamentous type and they float under the surface of water stamens are very long in this type of flowers and they pollinate from under the water example is zostera hydrilla and ceratophylla so that is about hydro hypohydrophily all other characters are similar that is unwettable the stem and stigma everything will be unwettable and they will be under in under the water the next type is epihydrophily here the pollination will take place above the water here the female flowers reaches a surface uh, of the water and the male this female flowers will be attached to the stalk and the stalk will be coiled they never detach from the stalk but the male flowers are released uh, to the surface they get detached and come to the surface of the water here you can see an example velisneria plant the male flowers are attached female flowers at the stalk male flowers are detached and they come to the surface and through the water they move into the uh, near to the female flower and they undergo pollination okay the next type of pollination is by bird 
the bird pollination is otherwise called as ornithophily now what are the characteristic features here this type of pollination is by bird pollination by bird is called as ornithophily the characteristic features of flowers are the flowers are very attractive may be large or smaller in size but it will be very conspicuous flower produce abundant nectar and edible pollen all floral parts are leathery and the another feature is the corolla or the petal mostly it will be a funnel shape for easy feeding of nectars by the uh, birds through with the help of their beak example is calstemon or it is called as bottle brush that is all about bird pollination one more type is there uh, which you have to study that is about bat pollination pollination by bat is called as chiropterophily very important it's called as chiropterophily okay that's so that is all about the different agents of pollination how they pollinate what are the characteristic features of flower i hope everything is clear to you if you like my video please like share and subscribe and wait for the next video of the remaining portions thank you once again for watching my video see you have a nice day thank you